Good morning. morning. You can see that we're filling in this morning, and so uh, Jerry and Rick and whoever else is going to be helping, we're trying to do our best to fill in this morning. And today we're going to be uh, reflecting a little bit on floods and stormy weather. And the most I can tell is that everybody is really kind of relieved that we're going into the new year. Last year was a bit stormy. But guess what? Jesus is with us in the storm. Can you say amen? Amen. That's good. All right, we're ready to go. And the opening scripture there is, He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me up out of deep waters. That's a promise for us today. And we'll join in our first hymn here. of Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love sweat drops of blood for mine. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. sorrows he bore for my soul that night. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. He took my sins and my sorrows. stand for the reading of the scripture, Psalm 75. I marked it in my Bible many years ago, that this is a good psalm to declare to our contemporary society. So let's just make this a declaration this morning. And I'll read the first verse, you read the second, I'll go the third, you do the fourth. Are you ready? We praise you, God, we praise you, for your name is near. People tell of your wonderful deeds. When the earth all its people quake, 
It is I who hold the pillars firm. Do not lift up your horns, that's for the word for strength. Do not lift up your strength, the horns, against heaven. Do not speak so defiantly. No one from the east or the west or from the desert can exalt themselves to It is God who judges. He brings one down and he exalts another. And as for me, I will declare this forever. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob, and then all together, who says, I will cut off the horns of all the wicked, but the horns of the righteous will be lifted up. And then uh, let's join together in confessing what we truly believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He sent into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, right hand of the Father. From then she shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Jerry's coming to share our, about our uh, missionary of the month. Good morning, and happy new year. I'm here today to talk to you about our AFLC missionary focus for the month of January, Pastor Todd and Barb Shercoke. They began serving in Mexico in 1996. They have started exciting missionaries with kids and families, finding that to be the one of the most successful ways to reach people. Alongside their congregation, Todd and Barb minister to the community. They have a special heart for youth and look to mentor and train them to become active members of the congregation. I'd like to share with you their December 2020 newsletter. Dear friends, we are finally home. I received my passport at the beginning of October and returned to Mexico to begin the cleanup and repair of our stolen pipes. Barb also finally received her passport in November and made it home in time for Thanksgiving. We are so grateful to all of you who helped us with all your prayers. My dad, Lee Shercoke, also went home for Christmas. Dad passed away on December 1st. He was one of our biggest supporters. I thank God for my dad's willingness to let us follow God's call and for his faithful encouragement with mom in so many ways in our ministry over the years. Thanks so much for your prayers for us and for my family in these days. In Jesus, Todd and Barb Shercolk, Jerez, Zacatecas, Mexico. And here are some prayer requests from Todd and Barb. Please pray for the spiritual growth of our youth and their families, for God's wisdom and open doors regarding the purchase and constructions of a church building, for our children, Rachel and Ben Davis, Megan and Josh Hedstrom, and Kirsty. Uh, if you feel to uh, call to donate to AFLC missions. I have printed some little cards and they're on the table across from the bulletin board and on them are, are the, um, the website for online giving and also an address that you could send a check to if, if you wish to. Could you please pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the ministry of Todd and Barb Shercolk. Please equip and provide for them as they serve you and your people in Mexico. We pray for spiritual growth for the youth of their church and their families. Please give them wisdom and open doors that it is your will for them to purchase and construct a church building. Please watch over their children. They are far from them in the United States. Rachel and Ben, Megan and Josh and Kirsty. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you for bringing that to our attention. I, <clears throat> as a member of the church, Judy and I just appreciate the fact that I lose my ear thing here. Oh, there we are. That, <clears throat> that we're able to each month to uh, remember a missionary family because that really keeps us uh, kind of close to those who are different parts of the world. I know in my last, my former life, that wasn't so true, so I really appreciate that. And then uh, we're still going on here with uh, trying to fill in, and Rick is going to come and share with us. There he is. Yep. On number three. Very good. Thank you so much. Uh, any kids who want to come up, you're welcome to. You don't have to, but you're welcome to. Okay. <laughs> Just a couple things. Come on over here and sit down. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for all of you being here today as well. I've had the opportunity in the last, I don't know, 20 years or so to visit lots of countries. I've been able to go to Africa four times. You know where Africa is on the globe? Yeah. I got to go to West Africa, to Ghana, I got to go to Ethiopia and Kenya in East Africa, and I was also able to go to Morocco one time. And it was all because of people who work with other people groups, other people from different places to bring the gospel to them. And you know what I discovered? At all of those places where we went, whether it was with Compassion International or uh, Gospel for Asia, or Trans World Radio, that the kids loved to sing. You guys like to sing? No? <laughs> I'm not going to ask you to sing by yourself, but a lot of grown-ups don't like to sing either. They just feel uncomfortable doing that. And I don't think the Lord cares so much if you sing in tune as much as if you're singing from your heart. And do you know any Bible verses? Do you have any Bible verses memorized? You do. Do you want to sell, tell us what it is? John 3.16. Um, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Wonderful. That's great that you know that. Well, I brought a couple. Here, you guys can look at these. Now, look at this verse. And you know one of the best ways to learn Bible verses? Of course, memorizing is really good. And we know that children learn better to memorize than adults do. You guys have a beneficial that you're young enough to really work on memorization. I'm kind of an old guy, and I struggle with memorization. I remember songs from the 60s, Beatles songs, <laughs> better than I do some Bible verses. One of the reasons is we sang a lot of those. So there's a song. What's, what You want to read what that verse says? This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Okay, so... And maybe we'll have a harmonica band here sometime <laughs> at church. Okay, who knows? That could happen. So this, <laughs> this is that verse. Okay. Tell me what the verse is again. Psalm one eighteen, verse twenty four, and it says, "Okay, this is the day that the Lord has made."
So one of the ways you can help memorize some Bible verses is by when you're looking at the Bible and you're reading it is to maybe kind of sing them. Who knows? A lot of the people who sing in Christian uh, music today that you hear on the radio, that's what they did. They went to the Bible and they looked at Scripture and then they asked the Lord to help them put it into words. There's another one from Philippians. We used to sing back in the Jesus people days. Um, and it was around for a while. Do you remember it? Rejoice in the Lord always again. I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always again. I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice again. I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice again. I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always again. I say rejoice. That's from Philippians chapter 4. And so when you read your Bible, think about that. And when you hear music, Christian music, like we sang today, even and we're going to sing another song, it's very important that the words that are being sung tie in and are very part of the Bible. Even Martin Luther, you know, this is a Lutheran church, even Martin Luther said one time that next to scripture, music was the most important thing for our worship. So it's really important to sing. And if you don't want to sing in front of anybody, when you're by yourself, sing and sing some of those scriptures. Amen. Thanks for getting us singing there, Rick. That was, that was good. <laughs> I saw a couple of people towards the back. They're almost going to clap their hands. <laughs> didn't, didn't know what to do. <laughs> uh. Well, our gospel lesson for today is from... Uh, Luke 17, um, I, I'm not used to the high-tech uh, things that we have here in our church, but I, I just think it's really, really great that all that we have, and uh, I don't even begin to know how to use that, so I'm not going to do that, but I notice everything is up there, so <laughs> I didn't know that. It's pretty so I hope I... Uh, I hope I get through this here today. <laughs> Not used to doing this. <clears throat> anyway, our gospel lesson, I chose this in Luke 17 because it talks about the flood and talks about Noah. And, and Jesus was saying in this text, well, uh, there's a lot that uh, you don't know about, but there's one sign that you can really count on. It's uh, a flood. And so that's what's in our text here today. So. I'm going to read this for you, but I think I'll read it looking up there. <laughs> um, well, let's stand for the reading of the gospel. <clears throat> Once on being asked by the Pharisees <clears throat> when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, the coming of the kingdom is not like something that can be observed, nor will people say, here he is or there he is, because the kingdom of God is in your midst. Then he said to his disciples, the time is coming when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. People will say to you, there he is, or here he is. Do not run after them, for the Son of Man in his day, will, for the Son of Man in his day will be like the lightning, which flashes and lights up the sky from one end to the other. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so also will it be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating and drinking and marrying and being given in marriage up to the day when Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. It was the same in the days of Lot. People were eating and drinking, buying and selling, 
planting and building. But the day Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. It will be just like this on the day when the Son of Man is revealed. We'll stop there. And you may be seated. <clears throat> oh, I forgot congregational prayer. We read the gospel lesson. I'm supposed to preach now, but we're supposed to have a congregational prayer. So let's have the congregational prayer and praying for the sermon all together at once. Like I say, I'm filling in. <laughs> I haven't done this for a long time. Uh, another good thing that pastor does is have us pray. Um, it keeps people before us. And I don't know if there's anybody <coughs> that has any other prayer requests today. I'm not going to take them because I'll have, to, I'll have to mark it down and maybe forget it in the prayer. But we'll have a prayer here and just pray for these people and uh, just prayer in general. Um, so let's just do that and also pray um, uh, I just uh, I just want you to know that I stand before you as just a, a humble member a humble member member of this congregation and Tom asked me a long time ago to preach and so I've never had so much time to think about a sermon <laughs> and so <clears throat> what's what what's you're going to hear is what's in our, my heart. And it's for my wife and I, as a member of this congregation, and I hope that you too will be able to receive it that way. So let's just pray before the Lord. Lord, you know all the needs that we have. We thank you for the body of Christ here at Good Shepherd and Lord, we, we list these needs each week and other uh, weeks, other names come up and so, Lord, we bring before you all those who are needy. We just take a quiet moment and remember. We uh, remember before you those who have needs. Collectively, Jesus, we pray, hear our prayers. And today, uh, we want to pray for Pastor. Thank you that he can be away and be with family. We pray for your protection over them. Lord, we pray that you'll guide and direct our pastor. And most, most of all, Lord, we pray you'll protect him. Protect him from the fiery darts of the enemy. And today, Lord, it, uh, for me preaching, it just happens to be the first day of the new year. So we're starting, starting over again, and uh, we all have memories of the last year, and most of what we've read and heard hasn't been as positive as we'd hoped. But Lord, help us today. Jesus, we cry out to you that our eyes and our ears would be open, that we can see and hear you and know that you are Lord of history and that you have come to rescue us. And we have an ark, we have a boat. It's Good Shepherd. Help us to see that, Lord, and to believe it and to trust you in what you are going to do in the days to come. Because when we look the horizon, it looks stormy. So help us, Jesus. For we ask it in your name. Amen. I, uh, I've looked at a lot of summaries of this, of this past year. And in all my years, you know, you kind of do that as a preacher. You go looking for stuff. and I can't remember many years when it was more, well, let's just thank, be thankful that we're through this. So I don't know what your memory is or what your thoughts are, but for me, I would use terms like it's been rough sailing. Uh, the water's gotten kind of choppy. There's like a, a storm 
the waves are coming up and you can see the storm coming. I, I grew up near Lake Superior and boy, you could tell when that storm was coming. And if you were out there in this 15 or 20 foot uh, fishing boat, you make sure you got off there because a storm was coming. And some of you have experienced floods when the water has ra been raising, rising. So how would you describe the way it looks today? Uh, one couple of uh, opinion polls I've read where they've taken surveys, the majority of the people don't look positively to what's coming. I remember when, uh, when Judy and I were in California for the second time and I was going to seminary at Fuller, we drove up, uh, I forget what road it is, we drove up there and we ended up in Solvang, California, a Danish community. And I don't know if any of you have ever been there, but they have a church, a unique Danish church. And uh, we went in there, and there's, of course, the beautiful altar and all the Lutheran, you know, you, you can really recognize a Lutheran church, but then way up above was a, was a big wooden fishing boat. And that really represented the faith of a lot of those uh, Danish seafarers who would, go out, who would go out to sea. And it reminded them of uh, the song we're going to sing at the end, Jesus Savior, pilot me over life's tempestuous seas. And that was a reminder for them. They lived with the uh, reality of stormy weather, of raging seas, of turbulent times. And that reminds us of Jesus, both in the fourth and the sixth chapter of Mark, when uh, First one in the fourth chapter, Jesus is with the disciples in the boat and it's getting stormy and he's asleep. And he's saying to them, well, Jesus, don't, don't you care for us? And he wakes up and this is an amazing thing when you read about it. Um, he spoke to the wind and to the waves to be quiet and the wind stopped and the waves came to a still. And then he said to them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? You, you have to ask this like I have to ask. Is Jesus with us in the boat? And where is the boat? And I would guess some i got to remind myself to keep it down. <laughs> Settle down, Al. <laughs> some, some of us here today are, are feeling kind of lonely. You might be one of them. You might sense that you really have been paying more attention, are caught out, and are caught up in, in, in uh, choppy waters. And if you were really honest, you probably would say today, I don't know what this next year is going to bring, but I'm not, I'm not ready. I'm afraid. That's what's happened in our nation. We've had a perfect storm. And you know what all these things that have brought this storm about. And a lot of people have looked at that and have, have pretty much verified that there's a lot of disappointment out there, a lot of loneliness, a lot of discouragement, and an increase in emotional and psychological problems. And then in the sixth chapter, Jesus sends his disciples out, says, okay, boys, go on across, and all of a sudden there's a big storm, and, and uh, they're just uh, barely staying afloat, and then Jesus comes, and he's going to, go on by them. And they think it's a ghost. And Jesus said to them, take courage. Is it I? Don't be afraid. Now, I don't take this personally, but does Jesus seem like a ghost to you? 
The kingdom, as we're going to get into this gospel text, if there's nothing you remember, just remember this. The kingdom of God is within us, is here, among us, is right here. The presence of Jesus has not left. But if you feel like you're alone and you can't cry out to Jesus and holler for mercy and want him to help you, even if you have doubts and you're not willing to want wanting to do that, well, I'm telling you, you're living with a ghost. And uh, it's not healthy. So, you know, this storm, I mean, can anybody help us in this storm? It's a perfect storm and there's loneliness. And, and I, think, I think I had that in Scripture here. Psalm 6, Psalm 18. Yeah, I'm going to read that again. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me up out of deep water. I mean, if nothing else, you go home and just put that on your refrigerator. Put it on the window when you, or the mirror in the morning, and just, if you're kind of left out in the dark. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. The psalmist experienced that just like we do. There are times when uh, I've had to do that often and say to my confessor, who is my wife, uh, I'm, I'm not really doing too good. I'm, I'm just treading water. And there were times in the last couple of years when I kind of went underwater. And I was glad that I had a confessor. And this verse in Psalm 69 was really helpful for me. Rescue me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Deliver me from those who hate me, from deep waters. Do not let the floodwaters engulf me, or the depths uh, swallow me up, or the pit close its mouth over me. Answer me, O oh Lord, out of the goodness of your love and your great mercy, turn to me. So, Jesus is here. He's able to take us and help us navigate through the storm. And in our gospel text here, the, Jesus talked to his disciples after the Pharisees had come to him and they, they were wondering about the kingdom. Um, and they asked him kind of point blank, having asked by the Pharisees then the kingdom of God was, was to come. And uh, the Pharisees were the religious rulers. They were the ones who kept tabs on religious things. And uh, the people of Israel were anticipating the kingdom. That meant, you know, getting out from underneath uh, Rome's oppression, would mean peace and, and all the things that the Old Testament prophets had prophesied. But Jesus was not behaving and teaching and talking about the kingdom of God in the way that the Pharisees thought it would be happening. Because they were kind of divided. Some think, some think it was going to be a glorious, wonderful thing, and others thought it was going to be apocalyptic. And, but Jesus said to them, you know, I want, I want you to know here now, and my eyes are kind of bad, so I've got to lift up my Bible here so I can read it. The kingdom of God does not come by your careful observance or observation, nor will people say, here it is or there it is, because the kingdom of God is within you or among you. So Jesus is telling them and he's reminding us that, you know, the observation that people make, you know, the best committees, the best experts, the best whoever it is, the committees, will say, well, I think, and Jesus is saying, no. 
No, watch out for the experts. Watch out for the dominant narrative that says, well, we've uh, gotten together and we think if you just begin to plow here with us and uh, got this plan here, it's going to take us through the storm. Jesus is saying, and he's, he's, and he's saying it's not, don't let people tell you it's over here, it's over there. Not kind, not kind of a specific plan now. A lot of people are going to make prognosis, pro, pro, make proclamations about, well, maybe, I don't know, whole new administration, all that, you know, and we got these ideas. He said, be careful. If you're looking for the kingdom, don't get all wrapped up in what people are telling you. That might be it. That might be it. You're going to hear a lot of that. Jesus says, no. Can you believe with me, church? I, I believe it. It's in my heart. It's in my wife's heart that the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Jesus is here. Absolutely. And it's also here among us. Because if you think you can get mad at me now and you go home, I'm not the pastor. If you go home and think that you can get along on your own and not belong in a boat or an ark with other people, you are missing it. That's coming at the end of the sermon. We'll just talk about that a minute. But now then Jesus turns to his disciples. He said, well, you know, I'm, this is what I want you to know. Then he said to his disciples, the time is coming when people will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man. But, but you can't see it. Oh, I believed in you, Jesus, for years. I know you're my Savior, my Lord, or however you want to put it. But man, <laughs> this last year, if it's not your family, you only have to look at your extended family, which you had at happening at Christmas. I mean, it's a lot of, a lot of uh, um, fatalities. Oh, Jesus, it'd be so good if things could change. What if it doesn't change? Does that change? What God is doing? Do you really believe that God is in control, that Jesus is Lord of history? Because Jesus knew, he knew what his disciples were going to have to go through. And by the time they received the Holy Spirit and went on and did their thing, they, oh, they, man, it's here, man. Let's just go do it. They cast out demons, they healed people. It was just, bango. And then he said to them, Men will say to you, well, I, I tell you, I pray that for our pastor, I pray that for our church, I pray that for myself and for my wife. I thank, that, I thank the Lord that we believe in the Bible because that's our, that's our, um, that's our map. That's our sign. This is what we need. But Jesus said to them, he says, and he says to us then, men will say to you, there he is! Or, here he is! Watch out for people who get too specific and say, we got the answer. 
you just do this and you do that and it's going to all get straightened out. Not necessarily so. We have no guarantees that the storm that's coming isn't going to come. There's clouds on the horizon. The water is rising. And people are going to say, Boy, do we need discernment to hear the voice of the Good Shepherd and Jesus saying to us, Follow me. Follow me. Hear my voice. I repeat that again. Follow me. Hear. Hear my voice. Jesus said, don't, oh my goodness, don't go running after them. And if someone in your family is running after them, you pray. Just share Jesus as God gives you grace, walk it out, and pray that they'll come back. Because there's a lot of homesick people who have left home and need to come back home. But they've been well, that's, that could be. But how will you get good discernment? You pray, you read scripture, and get together with the people of God so that you can ask God together what's best. So then Jesus said, well, there's one sign I'll give you. It's the sign of Noah. Noah. So I'll read this here again. Just as in the days of Noah, so also in the days when the Son of Man comes, people were eating and drinking and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the, Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. Uh, well, you know, in the gospel text, I've preached on that many times, but I never saw this before when Jesus was talking about them. He wasn't talking about sinners. He was just saying people were preoccupied. They were indifferent. They were marrying, giving in marriage, just going about ordinary life. And faithful Noah stuck with it. He stuck with it. We could never stick, st stick it out like Noah did for those... 120 years, can you imagine what people thought of him? What are you building that big, bo that big box for, Noah? I don't know. What, I, what came to my mind when I was thinking of this sermon, I've got I to wrap it up here pretty quick, is uh, Bill Cosby. Remember that one on Noah? When, he's, when uh, God says, Noah, yes, Lord. And then God would give him the instructions, in the instructions, and in, in the instructions, and always... Just chuckle at that. Right. <laughs> then do this. Right. Do this. Right. So, can you imagine what Noah was going through? But he was faithful. And when the flood came, he and his family were rescued. I pray that in this year, for better or for worse, that you don't, come, you don't become preoccupied with the wrong thing. Preoccupied. Storm is coming. I believe the storm is coming. I believe the flood is coming. I mean, it's coming. Where is your focus going to be? There's going to be a dominant narrative out there that will take you away. But remember Noah. Faithful Noah. And remember the ark. I thought about this morning and I prayed it through and I, I guess that's what I, I make that confession and declaration before you. I believe with all my heart that this is God's ark. This is an ark. There's not 
there's some places that are called church that aren't an ark. Why? Because not, it, it's not built with strength and fiber. But this is an ark. And now this is the interesting thing is, how does God secure? How does God build? How does God strengthen his ark? He does it through relationships. I mean, in a real crude sense, you're stuck with me and I'm stuck with you. But it's how we do this thing together. Because God is building an ark. He's strengthening an ark. Why? Because people need to be rescued. That's the finality of what I have to say. And I've been chewing on that for quite a while, and how I spit it out, I don't know, but I pray, I really pray that you hear that, that you can believe this is God's ark, that he's building it in relationships, and he's got a purpose for this ark. Our pastor, the leadership, this building, not just for ourselves, but to rescue people who are really going to be in need. I'm not going to ask you to say amen, but I'm going to pray. Let's just uh, pray. Lord, uh, we come from many different places here today. Um, some of us have been here a lot longer than others, but we all have a story. And uh, we have a story to tell, and we all have a journey. We've all journeyed from some place, and lo and behold, uh, we're here this morning. And Lord, that's the ark. It's not things, it's not buildings. These are helpful, the building's really helpful, but the ark is people. The body of Christ, built together, energized by you, focused on Jesus, wanting to become like Jesus, and then reaching out and rescuing people who are in the storm. Help us, Lord, not to miss what you could be saying to us, that we might be faithful, each one of us, in our own way. Amen. Notice I hedged my prayer. What you might be saying to us. It's just my, my sense. Guess we're going to have a mix our last hymn there, yeah.
that stand as we close here and um, join together in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Then let's close with the doxology.